What's going on? Welcome to Revival. Who's pumped for Revival in there? Me, night three of Revival. I can so hardly exciting. believe it. I know, I know. It's been so such exciting. an incredible time over these past few days. We're at the halfway point. We still have two, tonight and tomorrow to go. And so much has been happening. And man, I'm excited for tonight. It's been great to hear the stories, seeing so many posts online. If you're watching online, welcome to, to the Creek Revival. And it is just so exciting to see what is going on here around the creek. A couple things I just want to make you aware of. If you are looking to connect with us, uh, just text the word CONNECT to 706-222-7123. We'd love to hear from you. If you're new to the creek, if you're newer to the creek, I was just talking to several families that have been here for less than a month. So if that's one of you, welcome to the creek. We're so glad that you're joining with us, especially during this time. It's such an exciting time. There's another thing. If you uh, have experienced something special during this revival, maybe an answer to prayer, maybe a miracle. We've yeah. heard a few uh, healings that have gone on during this revival. If there's just been something that the Lord's imparted on your heart, we want to hear about that. So if you could take a moment tonight, maybe it's right now as you're sitting watching this, and email us to my story at StevensCreekChurch.com and tell us all about it. We would love to hear from you on this. And one more thing, we like to use that text number a lot because it's just the easiest way for you to get connected with us. Yes, mm -hmm. text connect if this is your first time here, but we also know the Lord has just been stirring over these past two nights. And we saw so many people go to the altar and just give the Lord what was ever on their heart. And some of you may have accepted Christ for the first time last night. And if you did, that's the biggest celebration celebration the ever. One. It's the best decision you can ever make. And so we would love to partner with you that in that and just give you some resources so that you can take your next steps, right? Yeah. So you can text the word decided to 706-222-7123 and we would love to connect with you, follow up with you and like I said, give you those resources, right? Yes, it's, a, it's a, certainly a partnership and we say here at the church all the time that uh, these moments, these life decisions, our growth in Christ happen best in the context of relationships. And we just wanna start that relationship with you tonight as you go in this journey in your relationship with the Lord. Yeah. Well, we have a special guest tonight, uh, Pastor Kevin McGlamry, all the way from Huntsville, Alabama. Wow. We are so excited to have him here in the house preaching. It's gonna be a great message uh, that I know you are, are, are gonna be on the edge of your seat listening to. Uh, he talked to Pastor Mari about this a few months ago and then it just lines up perfectly where we are at with this revival. And so I'm excited to hear from Pastor Kevin McGlamry. A little known fact, he yeah. was the youth pastor at my home church. No way. Yes, growing up. And his wife, Amy, was actually my sister's preschool teacher. What a crazy and connection. So, yeah, cra oh my goodness. It's a small world. Yeah. It's a small world, but we are so excited to have we both are. Kevin and Amy with us tonight. They're such a special couple. Their ministry is so rich and vibrant there in the Huntsville, Alabama area. And so if you have family and friends in Huntsville, check it out, Life Church yeah, there in Huntsville, awesome. Alabama. Now, JT, I couldn't have you on here today without talking about small groups, right? Obviously. Especially because last Sunday we launched small groups. Yes, we did. Which was absolutely incredible. How many small groups did we have? We're up to 106 adult small groups. We have about 15, 16 uh, student small groups going right now. So that is it's a great time to get connected. It's a great time to get connected, great time to get in community. That's what we all need right now. We all need community, 106 adult small groups. So if you're over there and you're like, I just, I don't know if small groups for me. There's 106, and I wrote a couple down. We have crafting, fitness, financial peace, early morning. I think you lead a basketball one. I have a basketball one. And then there's all kinds studying specific books of the Bible, devotionals, different studies. So I'm telling you, there is a small group that you can find for you, and you can go to our website, stevenscreekchurch.com, plug into a small group today. Just check it out and just browse by, see if you can get connected in a small group. It will change your life. I and promise. I will say, if you didn't find one that fits you, maybe it's schedule conflicts, whatever it may be, if you're looking for a group and you couldn't find what you're looking for, now's the time to start one. Yeah, I'd love to meet with you. Idea. Email me jtblack at stevenscreekchurch.com. I'd love to follow up with you and let you get your small group yeah. kicked off. Well, we're so excited about Kevin McLamory tonight and these small groups that are kicking off. But JT, let's talk about tomorrow night. Tomorrow night is our next generation night. It is a night dedicated to our students, to our kids. And we want your kids here, your students here, 
Pastor Chuck Ramsey is here, and we are just so pumped for what he has to say. He's going to specifically speak into our next generation as they are the leaders of our future, obviously, uh, and just leading us in our faith as well. So many revivals that have taken over the world began with students, whether in high school, whether in college. And so we are believing that same thing in our youth group. We have so many wonderful leaders within our student ministry, and we want them to be out here as well. And so I'm excited for Generation Night. Right. And the Creek Kids, they have a special remix experience. I don't know what all that means, but I think it's going to be pretty awesome. It's going to be awesome. So Creek Kids be here, student ministry be here. Be here and get here early. Yes, but right now we're going to jump into worship. So stand to your feet and let's worship together. Welcome to Revival Church. Everybody, let's put our hands together. Come on.
come into this place and we give you praise we give you glory and we give you honor to the name above any other name that name of Jesus and God we're so thankful that we can come in tonight and we can forget about everything that's going on around us and we can focus our attention on you we can focus our attention on the creator of this universe the one that loved us so much that you sent your son Jesus to die on a cross for us so that we could have freedom from our past, freedom from our sin, and we could stand here whole and made new, lifting up your name tonight in freedom. And so God, we're just thankful for that. And so we have reason to come and celebrate. We have reason to come and to shout unto God with the voice of triumph. We have reason to clap your hands, all ye people. We have reason to come into this place tonight and lift your name because you're worthy. Because you're worthy. You're worthy, God. 
So God, it's our prayer that as we continue the rest of this night, that you would just do what you've started. This move that is happening in our church, God, it would just continue to happen. And as Pastor Kevin comes in just a few minutes, God, I pray that you just allow your presence to rest on him. And as he brings the, the word, and he opens up scripture, and he speaks to us, and he challenges us tonight. God, I pray that things will happen that we've never seen before. God, that miracles will happen, that those that are sick can be made whole and healed by the power of Jesus. By your stripes, we are healed. God, so whatever might happen tonight, God, we just give it to you. And we ask, we want you, all that we could possibly stand of you, God, that's what we want in our lives. That's our prayer. Everything that we want, that we could possibly stand, fill us up with that tonight, God. So we just love you. We give you glory. We give you praise. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. And everybody said, amen. Come on, let's just shout and clap and give him praise. Amen. So good. Hey, thanks so much for singing with us and worshiping with us. You guys can be seated if you can. It's going to be good. I want to join with Todd and just uh, reiterate that, that this is a move. This is a move that God is doing in us and in our congregation and I believe ultimately in this city. And God has you here because you're gonna be a part of that grace movement that carries this message and this power out into our community. Your footsteps have been ordered to be here tonight because God wants to fill you up to overflowing so that you can be that light in the midst of the darkness. This is a move. This is a move, and God tonight is going to move in your life. God's going to move in your life. Three years ago this week, uh, I had three different people tell me in the span of five days that the Lord spoke to him and said, Marty said, there's going to be a second harvest coming. And this was in Houston, Texas at Lakewood Church. He didn't know that we named this church Harvest when we first started. And he said the second harvest is going to be bigger than the first. Then a friend of mine said that on Friday, and then Friday night, Sammy Rodriguez, a pastor in California, stopped service, and he said those same words. There's a second harvest coming for some pastor here. And I looked over at Patty, and I said, I think I've heard that before. That sounds familiar. And she said, you heard it this week at Lakewood. And, I, and JT said, you heard it this, today at lunch. And for three years, we have been praying and believing for a move of God and a second harvest. And I believe the second harvest is here. <laughs> Hallelujah. And what we have seen is not, cannot compare to what we will see. God is bigger. And so I just want you to, as you go through the service tonight, I want you to say, God, I want everything that you have for me. And I realize some of you, last night, uh, it was somewhat overwhelming. The move of God was overwhelming, and we were not prepared for that. You know, sometimes you just can't micromanage God. We try to manage everything here and everything in place, but it was bigger than we could imagine. And so, uh, if you did not have hands laid on you uh, last night, you will tonight. Well, you will tonight. And so, just, just trust that. But our speaker tonight is uh, Pastor Kevin McGlamory, and it's such an honor for Patty and me to have he and Amy here. Uh, he pastors Life Church in Huntsville and is doing an incredible job in Huntsville. I'm on a pastor's text thread with uh, over 25 of the largest uh, Church of God pastors uh, and Kevin's in that group and, and we communicate several times a day, all 25 and so we're a team of uh, pastors standing with each other, iron sharpening iron, believing for one another and celebrating uh, what God is doing and so it's a, a thrill of mine to have Kevin here and he's not here because he's my friend 
He's here because God has anointed him to preach. And Kevin, I want you to do Kevin. You don't have to do Stevens Creek tonight, okay? You do Kevin, and if he is who he, God's called him to be, it's all going to be good. And so we're so honored to have you. I want you to open up your hearts, receive God's word in Jesus' name. Amen. It is so good to be at Stevens Creek with all of you. Can you do me a favor? Thank you for your hand clap for me, but can we give a hand clap for Jesus because he's the one that's worthy of our praise. Yeah, amen. Uh, is it okay if I visit for just a second? Would you let me do that? Can I visit? Well, even if you won't let me, I'm going to. Since I have the mic, I'm going to visit anyway. Hey, it is, it is, a, it is an, a distinct honor for me to be able to uh, grace your pastor's pulpit. I know that you know the gift that you have in Pastor Marty Baker and his his wife. We we call him First Lady in our house. I don't know what you call. Um, they call you First Lady? No. Okay. They don't do that here. Okay. Okay. It's okay. We're learning each other really fast, aren't we? Yeah. But I know you know the gifts that you have in uh, Marty and Patty Baker. And I think it's appropriate for us to give honor to whom honor is due. And would you join me in giving honor to your pastors, wonderful people. I love you. Amen. Yeah, come on, tell them. I love you. Amen. Amen. Thank you for doing that. And uh, just so thankful to be here with all of you. What an unbelievable couple of days that you guys have had in revival. I had the privilege to be here last night with Dr. Rutland. And I just want to tell you, I don't have as many jokes <laughs> as Dr. Rutland. So lower your expectations on the jokes, okay? Uh, I, I told, uh, I think I told Pastor Dylan earlier today and, and maybe Pastor Todd. I might even said it to Pastor Marty. I said, if the preaching thing don't work out for Dr. Rutland, stand-up comedy is definitely something he should pursue, right? And so it was so good last night and such a powerful word to us regarding the Holy Spirit. And this is how the Lord works. Because as I was hearing him preach from Acts chapter 2, I knew the message that I was going to preach, and I'm preaching from Acts chapter 3. And so God has a way of setting things up. And he made a statement last night re regarding the word that comes from the Lord at just the right time. And you would be surprised to know this, but my message, and I promise you, I wrote all of this before I arrived. The title of my message tonight is At Just the Right Time. And so I believe that the Lord is, is in what we're going to do this evening. Now, I am a Pentecostal preacher and so I know, I know that, yeah, yeah, I brought some people with me who understand who I am. They're scattered throughout the audience. Don't worry about it. It'll be all right. Don't get too nervous. And uh, we will not do a fire tunnel at the end of service. If you don't know what that is, just don't look it up while I'm preaching, but we'll explain it to you later. But uh, I, I really believe that the Lord has brought me here on assignment. I wrote this message that I'm preaching tonight for this house. And so I believe that I'm here uh, by appointment of the Lord. So Pastor Marty, thank you for the invitation. You, have, you could have had anybody that you wanted to, to grace your pulpit and your platform. And I'm the least of those that are on the, the uh, poster. But thank you for giving me the opportunity. It's my custom to stand for the reading of the word. If you don't mind, indulge me. Grab your Bible. Uh, if you don't have one that's leather bound or one that glows, it will be on the screen for you here in just a moment. Uh, look in Acts chapter 3. I am not reading from the King James Version tonight. <laughs> I am reading from the Amplified Version. So if I lost you right there, uh, Lord help them come back in Jesus' name. So let's look at the Amplified Version tonight. Uh, I just want to put you on notice. I do feel like preaching, so I'm going to get to it as quick as I can. 
But I do live by the thought, blessed is the short-winded guest preacher, for he will be asked back. So I'm going to do my best to give it to you fast. Amen. Let's look together. Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. The Bible said, now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, which was 3 o'clock p.m. And there was a man who had been unable to walk from birth and was being carried along, whom they used to set down every day at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. And they put him there so that he could beg alms from those entering the temple. So when he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he began asking them for, this version says coins, another version would say alms. But Peter, along with John, stared at him intently and said, look at us. And the man began to pay attention to them eagerly, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give to you in the name, and I love the parentheses here, authority and power of Jesus Christ the Nazarene. And then it said, begin now to walk and go on walking. Now, there's a whole lot of preaching there. I hope I can get to it in just a second. But then the Bible said, then he seized the man by his right hand from a, with a firm grip, raised him up, and at once his feet and his ankles became strong and steady. And with a leap, he stood up and began to walk. He went into the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they recognized him as the very man who usually sat begging for coins at the beautiful gate of the temple. And then the Bible said, they were filled with wonder and amazement and were mystified at what had happened to him. Come on, let's pray together. Father, thank you for the opportunity to be able to preach your word this evening. And I pray that preaching would be easy, enjoyable, and effective. And that the touch of the Holy Spirit would indeed make the difference. Father, would you open up our heart, our ear, our spirit to receive your word. And not just be hearers of the word tonight, but to be doers. Apply it to our lives. And Father, we thank you in advance for everything that you're going to do in this room tonight. Father, I believe that this is an atmosphere where miracles can manifest. God, I believe this is an atmosphere where you can do what man would say would be impossible, but with you, we know all things are possible. And Father, I pray if there's anybody in this room that does not know you, that they will choose to encounter you because we know that you can transform their life for all of eternity. And we thank you, Jesus, for what you'll do. And everybody said, amen, amen. You can be seated at just the right time. Now, before we get into the text, let me give you a little bit of background of what has taken place. Now, some of this is going to sound like that I am re-preaching what Dr. Rutland shared last night, but let me just give you some cliff notes. But again, I wrote this before I arrived here. And let me remind you of what took place. Simon and Peter and John and the disciples and the early church, some good things were about to happen. Jesus has just ascended into heaven and the disciples were returning to Jerusalem based on their instruction to go to a place called to an upper room for a time of prayer. The Bible said in Acts chapter 2, which we read last night, that when the day of Pentecost had fully come, there was a sound from heaven that Dr. Rutland described that filled the whole house and tongues of fire sat upon each of them. And they began to speak in another tongue, a, a tongue that was not their native language. And when the crowd heard the languages being spoken, they were amazed and they were perplexed, the Bible said. The crowd heard declarations about the wonderful works of God. They wondered how these people could speak their language and exactly what it meant. So Simon Peter seized the opportunity and he preached a sermon to those listening. And the results of this sermon that he preached were 3,000 people who gave their heart to the Lord. Now, if there's any preachers in the room, if, if you had 3,000 people give their heart to the Lord on one day in a message, you'd be pretty excited about that. You'd probably tweet that out. You, you'd probably make an Instagram post about 3,000 people being saved. But he was excited about the response to the word of God. Now, remember, you have to understand, this is the same Simon Peter who 53 days earlier had said about Jesus, I don't know the man. 
This is the same Simon Peter when asked if he was a, a disciple or a follower of Christ, he denied it. Peter on the day of Pentecost, this same Peter stands before a crowd of these same people that he once feared yet boldly declared the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the power of the Holy Spirit. Peter stood before many of the same people who had shouted, crucify Jesus. He stood before the same people that stood there on the, the day of the trial with Pontius Pilate in the city of Jerusalem. And, and now Peter declared in no uncertain terms that the man that they ordered be crucified was in fact the Son of God. What an unbelievable shift. How did Peter go from being frightened to fearless? How did he go from being cowardly to courageous? How did he go from denying Jesus to defending Jesus before the very same people in the very same place? Well, let me just give you this. this. If you're taking notes, this would be a good thing to write down. Peter did not change his mind. Peter himself was changed. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what happens when you encounter the, the Spirit of God. You are not the same person. Something happened to Peter, the other apostles, and all that were present in the upper room. It set them literally on fire for Christ to such a degree that the Bible said in Acts chapter 17, verse 6, here are those who are turning the world upside down. Can I tell you for just a minute why you need the power of the Holy Spirit? It is because he's empowered us to turn this world upside down for the cause of Jesus Christ. That's what revival is all about. That's what this prayer season is all about. For us to press into the presence of a holy God and allow him to change and transform us so that we might make a difference in the world in which he's placed us. Amen. Come on, that's a good place to praise him. You see what happened to them or what needs to happen to happens to us what needs to happen to us if we call ourselves a disciple of Christ is really what Pentecost is all about. We declared last night that it was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Yes, it's for individuals, but it's for the church. It's where the church was birthed. And you and I, you and I are able to receive the fullness of God's Spirit. His Spirit helps give boldness to further the work of God. We cannot do all that God asks of us in our own natural abilities, talents, and resources. But the, the, we need the work of the power of the Holy Spirit to help us build the kingdom of God. That's what he called us to do. Now let me, let me quickly get to our text and tell the story. In Acts chapter 3, the Bible talks about Peter and John and they were headed to the temple to pray. And upon entering the temple, they encountered a lame man who was carried daily to the temple gate to beg for alms from all who entered into the temple. In this time of Judaism, at, at this time, the giving of alms was perceived as something that gained one favor with God. Being placed at the gate is where he would encounter some of the most generous people and he they felt like that they would give to him. Now this gate, the gate called Beautiful, many believers or many people believe actually that the doors uh, that led into the temple area were massive. They were, instead of it really being a gate, it was doors. In fact, some people believe that it took at least 20 men to open these doors. They were beautiful doors. They were made of bronze and gold and silver. But this man spent every day sitting outside the gate, watching people enter in the gates with joy and excitement. They were going to hopefully meet with God, offer prayers, and ask him to intervene in their lives. He could look inside, but he could never go in because he didn't have the ability. He was so close, yet he was so far away. How many people in our world today are just like this lame man? They're chasing after things that they think will fulfill them, that will cause them to have a beautiful life. Many are near the entrance, but they just can't seem to enter in. They can't enter into all that God has for them. And I want to tell you, I believe that God is asking us in this revival meeting not just to stay at the outer gates, but for us to enter in and press into the presence of God so that we can receive all that he has intended for us. This lame man sees Peter and John about to pass him and he calls to them and he in hopes to receive something in return. And Peter makes this exclamation. He says, look at us. 
The lame man reached out his hand with an expectation of receiving money from the apostles. However, this is what Peter said to him in Acts chapter 3, verse 9. He said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you in the name which has authority and power. We know that to be the name of Jesus Christ. Begin now to walk and go on walking. See, Peter did not have any money, but this is what he did have. He had the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to catch this right here. Too many people want us to support their condition when Jesus is interested in transforming their life. Jesus wants to transform your life. One man said it this way, it's not the business of the church to make the world's present condition more bearable. No, our responsibility is to release the redemptive work of Jesus Christ to everyone who will hear it. Family, I wanna tell you something, and I call you family because we are family, by the way. Family, it's time for us to, to speak the name that is the, the greatest name in all of the world, the name that has all authority and power, and that name is the name of Jesus. There's power in his name. And I wanna tell somebody in the room tonight, if you don't know what else to do, you just need to simply speak the name of Jesus. If you have depleted finances, speak the name of Jesus. If you have the report of cancer, speak the name of Jesus. If you have a prodigal son or daughter, speak the name of Jesus. If you have a depressed mind, speak the name of Jesus. If your marriage is in broken pieces, speak the name of Jesus. If you have an alcoholic father, speak the name of Jesus. If you're battling fear and anxiety, speak the name of Jesus. Over everything in your life, speak the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And when you speak that name, be ready for the power and the demonstration that will take place in that moment because Jesus specializes in bringing dead things back to life. Just speak Jesus. Peter released to the lame man what was active in his own life. He gave him the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want you to catch this. Too many of us are trying to give people what we don't have active in our own lives. Too many of us are trying to give people what we don't have active in our own lives. You want Jesus to use you to make a difference in this world? You are going to have to pursue him in this season like never before. These past 21 days of prayer that the creek has been involved in is what revival is all about. We're having a series of nights of services in a meeting called revival, but revival begins in the individual and revival begins by prayer. We need the Holy Spirit to be active in our lives and in our church. Dr. Cho, the pastor of the Yodo Full Gospel Church in Seoul, Korea, shared his secret in a book that he wrote behind his phenomenal growth of his church. And this is what Dr. Cho said. It is historically true that prayer has been the key to every revival in the history of Christianity. If you desire revival, there has never been, nor are there now, any shortcuts to revival. The only key is prayer. You want a movement? You want to change the city of Augusta? Continue to pray the way that you're praying and you will see God show up in ways that you never thought possible and he will change lives. That's what revival is all about. When you pray, prayer produces power. When you pray, prayer brings brokenness. When you pray, it enables you to overcome the enemy. When you pray, it opens up the door for the Holy Spirit. When you pray, it brings a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And when you pray, it creates a spiritual sensitivity in your own life. I don't know about you, but along with your pastor, this pastoral staff, all the creek leaders, and all of you, I have been praying for this meeting. I believe that, as your pastor said a moment ago, this is a strategic meeting, and I believe I'm saying this prophetically. God is about to do something at the creek that is different than what you have previously experienced. You're gonna to point to this 21 days, you're gonna to point to these revival services and the things that you are praying to manifest in this house according to the Spirit of God, I believe that you're gonna to point to this season and say, that's when it shifted, that's when it changed, that's when God began to do some things that we have been praying for that we have not seen before. I believe he's gonna do something incredible. And I wanna say this to you, this house is known for 
ministry excellence. They're known for being a light in this community. You are an inspiration to the Church of God tribe. I promise you, you are. You have been known for advancing the kingdom message. But I really believe I sensed this in my spirit, and as I was praying this this afternoon, uh, the Lord just prompted this again in my spirit. I sense that you are about to enter into a different season of greater impact. Your pastor said a second harvest. That aligns with that thought. Greater, now don't get me wrong, you've had unbelievable impact, but I believe you're entering into a different season of impact. Greater than four. I know you're already doing three services, and this probably makes you nervous. I'm not sure if you want me to say it or not, but be ready for another service. I know you already have one campus, and, and, and I, I'm not sure the additional plans or what's been told in the church, but, but I see more than what you have even now in that regard. Why? Because I believe the power of the Holy Spirit is evident in the room, and he's about to do something that we have not seen before. Amen. In fact, this house is going to be a place, it's always been a place where people are welcome. But I speak over this house prophetically, this house is going to be a house where people who have not had joy in years of their life, joy is about to be restored. This house is going to be a place that people's lives are in the midst of chaos and God is going to speak peace to their situation and speak peace to their mind. There's going to be people who are coming here who have lost all hope and they're going to discover hope in this room. There's going to be people who have given up on their relationship with Jesus Christ and they're going to find their faith renewed in the man, Jesus, who can change their life forever. There's going to be people who have given up on church, but they're going to stumble across Stevens Creek and they're going to give church one more chance because they're going to encounter people who are going to love them right at the point of their need. There's going to be people who don't have a praise in their spirit, but God is going to restore a praise in their heart, and they're going to give the very best praise that they can. This house will be known for being a house of prayer. This is what's going to happen in this place. And I speak over somebody right now, joy is about to come back into your life. Peace is about to come back in your life. Hope is about to come back in your life. Faith is about to come back in your life. Praise is about to come back in your life. Let the Holy Spirit work in your life and bring back everything that the enemy has tried to take from you. Come on, praise him right there, family. <laughs> Peter took the lame man by his hand and he lifted him to his feet. Peter's faith and confidence in the Holy Spirit caused him, watch this, to expect the supernatural to take place. His faith and confidence in the Holy Spirit caused him to expect the supernatural to take place. You need to begin to believe that the supernatural can take place like never before in this house. The Bible said in Acts chapter 3, 7 through, 7 through 10, and then he seized the man's right hand with a firm grip and he raised him up. And once on his feet, Ankles became strong and steady, and, he, and with a leap, he stood up and began to walk. He went into the temple for the very first time. He went into the temple for the very first time with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him doing this, and they recognized him as the very man who usually sat begging for coins at the, at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement. They were mystified at what had happened to him, the Bible said. Now, there was no delay in the miracle for this man upon Peter's words. Faith in action and the demonstration of the Holy Spirit, the lame man would never be the same. The lame man did what I hope all of us would do if we just receive a miracle. He began walking and leaping and praising God. Can I just give you a quick picture of, of what this looks like? Can, can I give you, I know what you're, you're really nervous about how I'm going to give you this picture, but can I give you a quick picture of what this looks like? How many grandparents do we have in the room? Any grandparents in the room? Yeah, we got grandparents in the room. Let, let me just say this. If, and grandparents, y'all can back me up. I'm not a grandparent. I, I'm not that old to have uh, grandkids yet, in, in case you're wondering. But, but the grand, grandparents, actually, I am, but I just don't have any yet. Praise the Lord. I don't, I'm not ready to be called Papa yet. But anyway, that's all right. If, whatever you call it's good. But let me give you an example of what this looks like. Grandparents in the room know what I'm talking about. If you have a grandchild, especially if it's your first grandchild, no one has to ask you if you have a picture <laughs> of your grandchild. Nobody got to ask you. You want to know why? Because the whole 
saved. I mean, you had to get more Google space, more memory, more. You, you had to get up your plan because you got picture after picture after picture. I mean, it's like a five-minute picture sl a slide show that you've got that you want to show people. You got videos. You got uh, you got outfits in your car. You got Christmas presents for three years. Come on, y'all. Where you at in here today? You're so excited because you have this grandchild. And you can hardly contain your excitement. And everybody's got to know. You want to show them. I mean, you're telling strangers at the pharmacy line, have you seen my grandkid? They don't even know you. But you're so excited about it that you've got to show them. And, and, and let me just, let's, let's just be honest here for just a minute. When it comes to children, we, we look like idiots, y'all. I mean, we make the funniest faces. We make the strangest voices and sounds. It's no wonder our kids look at us like we're, we're looking for an expression. But when you're using that voice that scares them, but it's all because you're excited about this child. You can't wait to FaceTime. You can't wait to see him. Every time you see him in person, you just want to grab them up. Remember, your kids are the ones who birthed them. You want to say hey to them first if you, if you remember that. But you just want to see that grandkid because you're so excited. This lame man who had been sitting at the gate, some people think he might have sat there for over 40 years, was sitting at this gate day after day after day, and he thought he was just going to get a few alms to help him make it through that day, but he encountered two followers of Jesus Christ full of the Holy Spirit that was about to shift his entire life. And the Bible said that when he was grabbed by the hand and lifted to his feet and the Holy Spirit touched him, he wanted everybody to know. And can I just suggest to you right here that if you are praying for a miracle and you get a miracle, you don't call your pastor and go, Pastor, I've got something to tell you. I just got a miracle. I just got a miracle. Miracle God. No. If you've been praying for your miracle for quite a while, and all of a sudden your miracle manifests, man, you are going to get some volume in your voice and sound to your voice, and you will let everybody know that God has just touched you and your miracle has manifested. And I want to tell you, that's okay. The Bible indicates that the people recognize him. Many had probably uh, uh, had given to him before. This is the guy I just gave to a moment ago. What's he doing standing up, walking around, praising the Lord? They were amazed and mystified at what had happened to him. They wanted to know what had been done to the lame man. Now, this is going to sound very scary to you, but I have three things that I quickly want to share with you. Number one, don't be afraid to use the authority that Jesus has given you. Don't be afraid to use the authority that Jesus has given you. What did the Bible say in Matthew 28, 18? All authority, all power, absolute rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Authority means dominion. It means rule. It means command. It means the right to enforce. Peter and John exercised the authority transferred to them by Jesus declaring his name. You and I cannot be afraid to operate in the authority that Jesus has given us to advance the kingdom of God, to come against the kingdom of darkness. We must declare the name of Jesus Christ. We don't have to operate in fear. We don't have to, every news report wants to make us afraid of everything that we read and see. However, God says when you receive the spirit of the Lord, you can walk in boldness and declare my name and you have authority that I give you. So don't be afraid of the authority that Christ has given you. Number two, the demonstration of the Holy Spirit provides a different platform. The demonstration of the Holy Spirit provides a different platform. News about the miracle of the lame man spread throughout the temple compound. There was excitement in the air. People began to gather on Solomon's porch, the Bible said. They wanted to see for themselves this man who was once lame but now was able to walk, leap, jump, and praise. The Bible said in Acts chapter 3, 11 through 26, that Simon Peter begins to preach about Jesus Christ, and he lets the people know how this man was made well through the power of the Spirit. It was not Simon Peter. It was not John. They did not want to receive the credit, but they were simply standing on the platform that was provided by the miracle demonstrated through the work of the Holy Spirit. I want to tell you, miracles will cause revival to break out. It will. Let somebody get up out of a wheelchair. Let, 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 let somebody's cancer fall off or dry up right in front of your eyes. 
Let some drug addict come and lay this stuff down on the altar. I'm telling you, revival will break out. Let some alcoholic come in and immediately be sobered up through the power of the Holy Spirit. That'll change some things. Let some prodigals that you've been praying for for double-digit years who are lost come back to the Father's house. That, that'll spark something as well. My prayer is that the Holy Spirit will move in this day in such a way that God receives all glory for everything that is accomplished. And I want to say this to you. If you will not try and share the glory of God, God will provide a platform for you to share the message of Jesus Christ every time he can. I'm believing for a demonstration of his power. And then thirdly, Jesus knows the right time. He knows the right time. Many believe Jesus walked by this lame man numerous times, yet Jesus never healed him. It's always kind of puzzled me a little bit when you think about it in those terms. Maybe Jesus didn't even ever acknowledge him. We don't know for sure. However, I believe that Jesus never forgot the lame man. I bet Jesus, when he walked by him, said, I've got a plan for you, son. And at just the right time, you're going to receive your miracle. I wonder if Jesus thought to himself, I know you're begging for alms today, but you have no idea what I have prepared for you. And if you will just wait and be patient and persevere, you will see the glory of God revealed in your life. See, if Jesus would have healed him during his earthly ministry, and this would not have been a bad thing, the man's healing would have been pointed to Jesus as the Messiah, as the Son of God. It would have been one additional proof. There would have been nothing wrong with that, but the lame man at the beautiful gate was, was granted a greater honor because this miracle pointed to an exalted risen Christ. This miracle demonstrated the power of the Holy Spirit in operation through his servants, Simon, Peter, and John. But if you want to go a little bit deeper, you look at the Greek adjective, beautiful, in front of gate, the beautiful gate. If you look at the definition in the Greek of the word beautiful, it literally means this, happening or coming at the right time. Happening or coming at the right time. I don't think it's a coincidence that this lame man day after day after day after day after day was put at the gate called beautiful. At the gate that was, its definition is at just the right time. He didn't know what was about to transpire in his life. He didn't know what was about to go down, what Jesus had already set up for him. All he knew was he was placed there every day and he was gonna be better begging for alms, but this was the day that two apostles were about to go by his way, and they weren't going to give him silver and gold or coins for him to make it through the day. They were about to give him the power of the Holy Spirit that would transform his life for all of eternity, and it happened just at the right time. See, there may be some of you in this room today that you've been praying for God to do something that he hasn't done yet. Maybe you feel like you're still at the gate, beautiful, and you're just sitting there and you're begging for alms. In fact, you're begging God to do anything. You're begging God to, to do what you've been needing him to do for years, and yet there seems to be no answer. And you're saying, Lord, have you not heard my prayer? Jesus, will you not come through? I would suggest to you that Jesus knows the right time. And at just the right time, he will do what only he can do. Maybe you think it's too late. Maybe you think Jesus isn't going to answer your prayer but I want you to have confidence tonight in the Lord that we serve according to his will and his word. He knows what he'll do. I want to close since they're playing for me. I want to close. They knew when to come up. Y'all know that. You know what it really means to a Pentecostal preacher when they're playing? Nothing. But anyway, let's just, <laughs> let's just keep on going. Let me close with this story. I'm kid, man. You keep playing. I'm, you keep playing. <laughs> I read a story about a pastor who went to Miami, Florida, and he was doing some outreach. In fact, they were going to do some street meetings, but they had a place where they were going to do some evening services, just like we're doing tonight. One day he was walking through the streets, and he was, this was the days where, some of y'all will remember this, you would actually go out door to door and 
place to place and you'd hand out flyers and sometimes you'd even knock on the door. Now you got to be very careful because all the ring doorbells and everything else, you know, you're not sure who's on the other side. I, I get it. But he found this man that was in a parking lot and he was sitting on a milk crate. He went up to him and said, hey, I'm, I'm a pastor. I'm, we're doing some meetings and I would, I would love for you to come and be a part of our meeting. He, By the way, what are you doing sitting in this parking lot, sitting on this milk crate? And the man said, hey, it's it's my job. We got something going on here. My job is to wash these cars. So if you're going to cause me any problem, I'm going to cause you a problem. He goes, no, 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 no problem here. I just just want to invite you to my meeting. The pastor said, hey, do you mind if I pull up another milk crate and just have a conversation with you? And the man said, sure. Pulled up a milk crate and sat right beside the man. And he began to talk about Jesus. Been talk, begin to talk about who Jesus was to him and what Jesus had done for this man. Maybe he didn't know the fullness of what Christ had done for him. And begin to share all about who Christ was. That he went to the cross of Calvary. That he shed blood. That he died. That he was buried. But he rose again. He got to the point of the conversation where he wanted to ask this man if he wanted to receive Christ into his life. And then I said, Pastor, that's a great story about Jesus. But Jesus wouldn't take somebody like me. Yeah, Pastor, you, 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 don't, you don't know the places I've been. You, you, you don't know what I've done. And I, I just don't think this Jesus, as, as good as you describe him, and he, he may have helped you, but, but, but I, don't, I don't think he would receive somebody, by, somebody like me. And the pastor said, I know for a fact, Jesus would receive you just the way you are. I know for a fact that Jesus would forgive you of your sin and receive you into his family. And an encounter with Christ will change your life forever. And the man said, okay, pastor, if you believe that, I'll pray that prayer with you. And in that moment right there on two milk crates, there was a, a bad man who prayed a sinner's prayer and accepted Christ into his life. Pastor invited him to the meeting and said, hey man, thanks for the conversation. Thanks for letting me sit down here on the milk crate with you. I'm glad I got to meet you. I hope you'll come to one of our evening meetings. We'd love to have you tell you more about who Christ is and what God is able to do in your life. And he push, pushed the milk crate aside and began to walk off. And the man said, hey, preacher. The pastor turned around, and this is what he said. He said, where you been? Where you been? I've been waiting for this hope all my life. And I would like to think the pastor's response was, I came at just the right time. I want to tell somebody in the room, I don't know what you're facing today. Somebody watching this online, I don't know what you're going through in this season. Maybe you feel like you've been here the first night and the second night, and you've seen people be uh, just experience the power of the Almighty God that we serve, and yet you have felt just like this man. You've been waiting, you've been waiting, nothing's happened, nothing's happened, and you're calling out, Lord, Lord, where are you? Where have you been? Where have you been? Maybe you're like the lame man that's been sitting at the beautiful year after year after year hoping 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 something would change in your life here's the good news Jesus has shown up at just the right time to change and transform your life and to help you out of whatever you're in come on stand to your feet I've got people in Huntsville, Alabama praying for this meeting right now. The song that they sang, there, there, uh, uh, there is a move about miracles. I told Patty this before I came up. I don't think I, t- I told Mari, but I prayed that this night would be a night of miracles. And they sing this song. I knew I was preaching this last night. And I want to tell you that God's timing is perfect. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're going through. But I'm telling you, I believe God can 
perform the miracle in your life. I believe you can do it. That's my faith. Maybe say, well, pastor, I prayed before. And I, I'm still praying for my miracle. Well, did you not hear the story? The man sat at the gate for a long time. Believing that someone would show up and help him. I, I'm not much. But the power of the Holy Spirit is something incredible. And I don't know what you need tonight. But I know this. If you'll believe in the supernatural of God, He can meet you at the point of your need. And He can change your life forever. You wouldn't be the same. He'll testify. You might even get a little excited. It's okay. And even if you... If your excitement, my mom's excitement is her hands raising, tears streaming down her face. That's my mom's excitement. I get a little more excited than that because I used to be a coach. So I get a little more excited than that. But whatever your excitement is, I know that if God touches you, you will sense that in your inner person. I want to do two things. Bow your heads with me. And we're going to pray. If there's anybody in the room tonight that you don't know Jesus as your Savior, Say, Pastor, this is the third night of revival. I know. But there may be somebody in the room that, or maybe somebody watching, they don't have a relationship with Christ, and you want to accept Jesus tonight, I want to give you that opportunity. If you're in the room, you say, Pastor, I need to know this Jesus that can change my life, that changed the man on the milk crate's life. I need to know him, and I want you to pray for me. If that's you in the room, I just want you to slide your hand up right where you are so that I can see him. We're going to pray. Is anybody in the room? Yep, several hands, I see you. Once you put it up, you can put it right back down. I've already seen four. Anybody else? Before we pray? Yep, I see you. You can put it back down. Anybody else? Before we pray, yep, I see you. Yep, I see you in the back. We're up to eight. Anybody else? Before we do anything else, we, 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 you, gotta, you gotta make it right. You, you gotta make sure you have right relationship with him. He's the one that can change and transform your life. Is there anybody else? If you need Jesus in your own mind, put it in the chat right there. Somebody's monitoring. Anybody else before we pray? Say, Pastor, pray for me. I need this Jesus. I need it to change my life. I see you in the back, up top. I see you. Anybody else? Don't miss your moment. This, you'll never have this moment again. Yep, I see you in the middle. Yep, I see you. I see you. 14 hands, family, 15. Anybody else? I need Jesus, I need him to change my life. I want right relationship with him. Pastor, pray for me. We're about to pray, I'm not gonna ask anymore. If you need Christ, raise your, this is your moment. We're gonna pray. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Father, I see you, I saw the hand, I saw it go up. Say, Father, I know I'm a sinner in need of a savior and Jesus, you are that Savior. I believe you are the Son of the living God. You came to the earth. You went to the cross. You shed your blood. You died. You, you were buried. But you rose again, just like the Bible said. And now I receive you into my life. And I confess you as Lord and Savior. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. Come on, family, somebody celebrate like it was your son or daughter. Come on, celebrate like it was your spouse. Hey! Thank you, Jesus. If you prayed that prayer, you need to tell somebody. There's prayer partners and, and people with, with team and shirts on within this building. You find them. They want to get, get you connected to a life group or a small group, get you into next steps. This is a place, if you've been looking for church, they've been looking for you. Make this your home and grow in your journey of faith. Yeah. Few steps. Begin to talk to the Lord just like you would talk to me or your best friend. Hey, Jesus, it's me. I don't really know all what to say to you, but hey, it's me. Help me out, man. However you talk to your friend, talk to him like that. Begin to read the Bible. Don't start in Leviticus. 
Psalms, Proverbs, Matthew. Start there. Thank you, please. Or First Chronicles and Second Chronicles. Don't go there either immediately. That's, that's later on. Ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Now that you know Him, you're a candidate to receive all that God has for you. Pray that prayer. Here's the last part. Say, Pastor Kevin, I've been at the gate beautiful long enough. I feel this. I've been at the gate beautiful long enough. And it's the right time. I believe tonight is the right time. If that's you, you need a miracle. You need God to intervene in your life. Maybe you got a report today. Maybe last week. And you know you have to have God intervene. You need God to intervene in a relationship. You need God to intervene in a job. You, you're, at, you're at the gate beautiful. You're broken. People are passing you by and you're, you're looking for help. You've got your hand extended and nothing's happening. I'm telling you, I feel the power of the Holy Spirit in this moment. This is your moment. What I want you to simply do is I want you to step out and I want you to join me right here. And we're going to pray for you. May only be a handful of people, and that's okay. But I know that's what I was supposed to do in, in the last part of this altar. Oh, come on, make your way right here. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Come on, push your way up. Push your way up. Come on, sis. Push your way up. Push your way up. Come on. Come on, family. Come on, family. Push your way up. Push your way up. Push your way up. Push your way up. Come on, push your way up. Bye-bye. Come on, push your way up. We still got room right here. And, and, and if you can't get here, you stay in the aisles. And what Marty said, I promise you, we're going to get to every single one of you. He knows me. If you're breathing, you might get prayed for tonight. Man, I feel the Holy Spirit in here. I, I don't know what you feel out there. Or, or, I'm telling you, God is moving even now. And let me just tell you something. There is nothing in my hand or Pastor Marty's hand or another pastor in the room. There's nothing in our hand. There's nothing mystical about us laying our hands on you. It is biblical. It is biblical. But it is not us, just like it wasn't Simon Peter nor John, but the Holy Spirit that resides in us. That's the authority that we're coming in. That's the, that's the, declarating, the, the declaration or the name that we're going to say and speak over your situation in your life. And we believe in this one moment at just the right time, God can turn it around. So I'm gonna pray for you and then we're gonna, we're, I need all the prayer partners, all the pastors, pastor like we did last night, I need you to help me. And we're gonna pray, Pastor Amy, my wife, I want you to help me. Any other ladies that pray, that are, are designated to pray, I know you have your, the way you do it, you follow the protocol of this house. Don't get out of order. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus right now for every person that is right here. Come on, stretch your hands this way. Somebody online right now, lift up your hands and allow the Holy Spirit to touch you right where you are. Let the power of the Holy Ghost enter into that room in that moment. It is your right time to receive your miracle. Father, I pray right now for everybody that's right here, everybody in the aisle, everybody up front, and we believe, God, that you're about to do the supernatural in the room. In the mighty name of Jesus. Todd, sing, sing.
show once. Come on, everybody. Come on, just continue to pray. Come on, continue to worship. God's doing something in this moment. Come on, praise Him. Press in with us.
everybody lift your hand right here. Come on, lift your hands right here. The Lord is in the room. The Lord is in the room. If you need anything from the Holy Spirit right now, just go ahead and begin to open up your mouth and ask Him for it right now. I'm telling you, God is doing something in this moment. This is the atmosphere where miracle, miracles can happen. Miracles manifest. And if you need anything from the Lord, now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time. Come on, open up your mouth. Verbalize it. Tell Him, tell Him. If you need the Holy Spirit, say, God, fill me with the Holy Spirit right now. Now's the time. Now's the time. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Come on, don't miss it. Don't wait on me. Don't wait on me. Just open up your mouth. Come on, praise him right here. Come on, talk to him right here. Receive right here in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody praise him like you know he's already done it. Come on, open up your mouth and praise him like he's already done it in the room. Did we miss anybody? Did we miss anybody? Did we miss anybody? If you did, raise your hand. Uh, my, uh, there's a lot of haze in here, I think, or maybe the glory of the Lord. I'm not sure, but whatever it is, I can't see too good. Did we miss anybody? I'm going with the glory of the Lord. Come on, y'all. Amen. 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 Woo. Did we miss anybody? I want to bless you, and I'm, I'm going to turn it over to, to pastor or whoever's coming. Are you ready? He's, he wants it back. You want it back? He's like, well, what's he going to do next? I'm not sure. Pastor, you're scratching the surface of what God is about. I, I sense something. There's a shift in this house. I've never been here before. This is my first time. I, I, I love it. Amazing people, wonderful people. Yeah, give yourselves a hand. I'm going to pray one more thing. I'm going to give it to you. There's an anointing on you, man of God. There's an anointing on you. Woman of God, there's an anointing on you. You are an encourager. You don't know this. Have you, did you, you don't know this, but your pastor was one of the very few that encouraged me in one of the toughest seasons of my life. I can think of about three people and he's one of them. We sold our property, church been there since 1975, static location. We sold our property and we decided to go mobile. That's not really how you should move a church. Unless the Holy Spirit says do it. It's the hardest thing I've ever done. Went through an unbelievable, horrible staff transition in the middle of that, that season. And I can remember calling your pastor. Sitting in my office with the door shut. My staff didn't know it. Secretaries didn't know it. Told Amy later. I just sat in my office and I wept. And I said, God, what are you doing? Why did you make me do this? Why did you make me do this? And your pastor encouraged me, rooted me on, said you can do it. And not just said I could do it, he showed up on a couple times to help my staff, to help me speak at our dream team rally before we went into our new building, which we've been in for three years. This man right here, an encourager. You're a mentor to younger pastors. Man, I'm a lot younger than you. <laughs> I'm not. 20 years, but anyway. <laughs> not really. 15, 15, 15. You're a mentor. You're a visionary. 
And I'm praying for God to, I'm praying for God in this next season to let every dream that is in your heart come into fruition. I want you to do me a favor. D does, does Patty come on the platform? Okay, all right, hey, Patty, come on the platform. Amy, come with her. Amy, come with her. I, I don't know all y'all's rules here, okay? I don't know everything. Amy, just come up to the platform when she wants to at my church. Amen. Have such admiration for, the, for you both. This is not a publicity stunt. You know me better than that. And if you don't know me, shame on you. I'm telling you, it's not. But I want to pray for you. I want your family to pray for you. Because I know this was your vision to see this happen. You know, people would say, why are you having a revival in the midst of a spike and high numbers and all that? Because that's what God put in your heart to do. And you're going to continue to hear the reports of what God did in this meeting. So would you do me a favor, would you stretch your hand this way? Some of the leadership, if you're comfortable, wherever you guys are, pastors and leaders, if you don't mind joining me. I wanna pray for you, Mario. I'm telling you, I feel the Holy Spirit in this moment. I hope this is okay. If it's not, rebuke me later. <laughs> I can receive it from you. Now, Father, I bless this house, your people, and God, what you're going to do, they are going to see a move like never before in the history of this house. And I thank you, Jesus, for everything that you're going to do in your precious name. Amen. Amen. I bless you, family. Tomorrow night, we're going to conclude our revival uh, as we in, uh, hear from Chuck Ramsey. And we're so excited to have Chuck uh, and Candace back here. Uh, they were on staff with me 30 years ago. And so, um, or Chuck was, they were not married then, but um, we're glad to have that. So be praying, be expecting, and we are going to uh, complete this revival uh, with a move like we haven't seen. And I just received what Pastor Kevin said, that we just scratched the surface. And here's what I know, that word's for you. You have just scratched the surface. That you, yes, you. You say, well, I'm, I'm just 20, 
or I'm just 35, or I'm 65. You have not yet seen what God has for you. That the best days of your life are just ahead. And so I want you to continue to press forward and believe, and I'm not going to preach again, but I'll see you tomorrow night, okay? you came here tonight at just the right time, just like Pastor Kevin spoke over to us. Whatever the Lord is doing right now, stirring up in your heart, we are so excited for that. We're so excited for this journey that you're going to be taking as you continue your faith. Whatever the Lord's prompted on your heart, don't let that stop here today. Just keep praying, keep seeking, keep growing and getting in a relationship with the Lord. And we also want to celebrate if you made the decision to follow Christ today. There's a link in the chat, but you also can text the word decided to 706 222 7 one, two, three, so that we can celebrate that decision. We saw so many hands going up in the auditorium today, and I believe that there were so many hands out on our online campus of people who received the Lord, maybe for the first time today, or maybe it's just time to get your life back on track, and you want to receive the Lord for maybe the second or the third time today. We also want to celebrate that. So text that number so we can know, so we can reach out to you. We can celebrate this decision and give you these resources, give you these next steps that you can take. But just like we talked about earlier, tomorrow night is the last night of revival, but it is going to be just as impactful, just as great. It's our next generation night is what we're calling it. Middle and high schoolers are all going to be here. We're having an amazing event for our Creek kids and then going to be hearing a word from Pastor Chuck Ramsey. So you don't want to miss it. You have to be here tomorrow night. But I pray that you guys have a blessed rest of your night, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.